laparoscopic management of gastrocolocutaneous fistula following PEG tube placement. New Hanover Regional Medical Center, Wilmington, North Carolina. An 84-year-old male with stage 4 laryngeal cancer presents with failure to thrive and malnutrition. A PEG tube was placed by gastroenterology. Surgery was consulted one week later, secondary to stool draining around the PEG tube site. A CT scan revealed a transcolonic PEG tube placement. The PEG tube was removed, but the site continued to drain, and the patient was unable to tolerate enteral feeding. Here you can see the transcolonic PEG tube placements on the CT scan images. PEG tube placement is a generally well tolerated procedure, however, complications can arise from endoscopy as well as the PEG tube placement. Gastrocolocutaneous fistulas are exceedingly rare. They're often asymptomatic and found late. They can be diagnosed with a contrast study or CT scan. Removal of the PEG tube with time for healing is usually sufficient. Surgery is sometimes indicated. The abdomen was entered and a 12 millimeter trocar was placed via an open Hassan technique below the umbilicus. Diagnostic laparoscopy showed no significant abnormalities other than an adhesion of the transverse colon to the left upper quadrant consistent with his colocutaneous fistula. At this time, additional 5mm trocars were placed in the right lower quadrant and left lower quadrant under direct vision. Using a blue load endoscopic GI stapler, the colocutaneous fistula was taken down without narrowing the transverse colon. We then evaluated the gastrocolonic fistula. There was a thin connection between the stomach and the colon, again consistent with the history of transcolonic PEG. We were able to dissect this out and di divide this fistula using a blue load endoscopic GIA stapler. At this time, we felt confident that the fistula had been taken down appropriately, and we felt that we could adequately place a PEG tube under laparoscopic guidance. An EGD was passed down the esophagus into the stomach, which was insufflated. Under direct laparoscopic guidance, a small stab incision was made in the left upper quadrant in a different area from the previous colocutaneous fistula. An introducer needle was inserted percutaneously under laparoscopic vision into the mid-body of the stomach. A snare was placed through the EGD scope and a wire was passed using the selogenator technique through the introducer needle. The wire was snared and was brought out through the stomach, mouth, and hypopharynx. The peg tube was then placed over the wire using the selogenator technique the peg tube was brought through the mouth, esophagus, through the stomach, and through the abdominal wall. Once the peg tube had been successfully completed, the abdomen was inspected for bleeding. 
everything appeared to be in order and the case was concluded.